good evening everyone i'm audible clearly right i'm audible clearly screen is visible clearly right okay so let's begin uh, this week so the first concept that i wanted to touch upon is capacitances have we discussed about capacitances till now no right Did we discuss the capacitances in the MOSFET? Don't think we did. Okay. So this is a MOSFET, right? Gate train source also. Model and source. So what do you understand by capacitances? The very first question: What is in capacitance? Is what is a capacitance? Stores electrical energy. It stores electrical energy in form of charge. But uh, what is the basic understanding that you have about capacitance? Ma'am, it differentiate uh, voltage, ma'am. Integrate current. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Where inductor is uh, quite uh, different, opposite to this. Till we. It will integrate voltage, differentiate current. Okay. It opposes the change in current. It opposes the change in current. Current. Okay. And what else do you know about capacitance? Okay, so it will it will band limit the it will it will limit the I mean the after uh, it will limit the uh, band it will limit the bandwidth mem I means beyond the certain frequency. Uh, the signal will get attenuated. So we need to take care of frequency. Yeah. Well, so it is basically a frequency dependent component. So yes, ma'am. It, uh, it changes like uh, the behavior of your circuit changes with frequency yes. because of this capacitances. Yes. So that is the reason it is very important to understand um, these capacitances which come into picture, because uh, there might be a profile that you might be thinking of. Uh, let's say you wanted a gain. And you have designed an amplifier, and you are expecting a, your gain to be like a uniform gain throughout your frequencies, but that doesn't happen. What actually happens is you start seeing uh, your gain degradation, and uh, the main reason behind that is the presence of capacitances in the system. So when we talk about capacitances, talking about very basic. So what are capacitances? Capacitances change in charge per unit voltage, right? So how much is the change on charge that you see per unit change in voltage? The moment you change the voltage, is there any change in charge? If there is a change in charge, then it will introduce capacitance. Now. There are four terminals in a MOSFET, right? So these four terminals will contribute to four different capacitances. We commonly call them CGT, CG, CDB, CSB, and CGs. So first of all, for a capacitance to exist, there needs to be a change in charge. If there is no change in charge per unit voltage, then there won't be any capacitance. Okay. Now let's say, in most of the cases, when we ideally solve the circuits, what do we uh, uh, consider? That our uh, body is shorted, uh, shorted to source terminal, right? So, if your body is shorted to source terminal, will uh, will that introduce any capacitance into your system? So no, much. No, right? Because Not first better. of all, there is no dV. dV equal to zero. There is no voltage change. So, the moment there is no voltage change, there won't be any charge change. So capacitance will definitely be zero. Now, so these capacitance, as you can see, they are connected between different terminals, right? 
and there are multiple terminals which are coming into picture now when we see let's say if you uh, connect your transistor in a common source fashion considering that your body and source are shorted for now so if body and source are shorted then csp will be zero now gate and body so see uh, gate and source are like directly coupled but uh, there is no capacitance between uh, gate and body uh, such we don't consider that capacitance only capacitances are between adjacent terminals so it's between gate drain gate source drain body body source so like that it's between adjacent terminals because uh, there will be like uh, so if uh, i would say that uh, there is this uh, change in potential and uh, therefore the change in charge. I understand where this question comes from. Like you are saying that CGB, right? Because if there is change in gate potential, your body, uh, so that uh, if there is change in gate potential with respect to body potential, definitely there is a charge, a charge difference. So it should lead to capacitance. But that capacitance is already being covered in these uh, other capacitances that you are seeing. So those are intrinsic, like internal capacitors between your uh, gate and body. There are capacitors. And we'll discuss uh, another topic just after this. There you will see that capacitor coming into a picture. We call it as depletion capacitance. But we, so that particular capacitance has already been taken care of in these other terminal capacitances. So we don't consider that uh, CGB separately. So that is what uh, I'm trying to say. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah. So in this particular case, now there is your capacitance CGD. There is a capacitance CGS. Another capacitance is um, yeah, C, D, B. Now, if you observe them carefully, so if we are making a small signal model for our MOSFET, so this is your drain node, right? this is source which is already grounded now how your capacitors will come into picture so see there is a capacitor between gain to source node and ultimately since source is grounded so we can directly make a capacitance cgs from gate to ground similarly there is drain to body ultimately drain to source so this capacitor is also grounded so C D B. now there is another capacitance right which is CGD it, it is actually a capacitance which comes between your input and output terminal this CGD capacitance is actually shared between your input and output terminal so how to deal with this capacitor so there is a co uh, concept which is Miller. known as sorry Miller capacitance modes. yes so this is known as Miller capacitance so basically this is shared between your input and output so what we do in Miller's theorem like by applying Miller's theorem we divide CGD ma'am ma one more thing also ma'am why these things will called as floating capacitance ma'am which one 
feed CGD? CGD is uh, called as floating capacitance. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I, I know the name, but I don't know how that uh, floating uh, name came from uh, to this. Okay. So if you observe very carefully uh, the other capacitance, let's say CGS and there is CDB, right? Mm. So these two are like connected between one terminal to ground, right? But when you observe CGD, this is connected between two, uh, two floating terminals, like these two nodes are actually floating in nature because V in is changing correspondingly your V out is also changing. So there is no fixed voltage. If you observe for CGS, there is one node which is already fixed, right? That ground. For CG, uh, for CDB also, there is a node which is fixed to ground. But if you observe only in case of CGD, there are these two nodes and both the nodes are actually floating. With a change in V in as well as change, uh, the output also changes, right? So both the nodes are like uh, both the voltages are changing so that's why uh, it is called floating capacity as far as uh, i understand yeah, yes ma'am i'm following yeah if uh, if not between maybe i it, it is present in between two uh, two voltages not one voltage and ground that's why yes. it is so two voltages two uh, floating voltages so that might be the reason but uh, maybe i'll look into it so from my understanding what i uh, feel that is the one case uh, that that's why we call it as floating because it is like both the nodes are actually variable nodes for the cgd so that might be one reason others i'll maybe look into it and get back to you again Yes, there is some other reason other than this. Yeah. So CGD floating capacitors. So that should be one of the major reasons, but uh, I'll look into it again and get back to you. Yeah. Okay. So what we are talking about, we are saying uh, like this CGD is basically connected between input and output node. And uh, so to simplify the circuit, what we want, we want our, uh, so our circuit to be simplified such that we can solve the input part separately, and we can solve the output part separately, and we can finally report our results. So to get that configuration, this Miller's theorem, uh, so, uh, Mr. Miller came up with this theorem that he uh, divides the CGD capacitors into two parts one in C in and other is C out. So what actually happens is he distributes this uh, capacitor CGD such that your C in will have CGD 1 minus AV Cn will have a value of CGD1 minus AV and C out will have a value of CGD plus 1 by AV. So this is how your uh, capacitance will look like uh, an input as well as an output. Chose uh, to simplify, it simply becomes CGD into AV and this becomes CGD. In simple terms, where this AV is your gain. So now if you observe something, this capacitor which was shared between uh, your input and output, ideally what would you think? That this capacitor will simply distribute between two and what is the best case of distribution that half of CGD could come in input and half of CGD could go to output right that is the basic guess that everyone could have uh, regarding sharing of anything between two uh, things and we equally share them but uh, due to this Miller's theorem actually what happens so the scenario is the CGD is uh, CGD is a value, let's say X, right? CGD is X farads. So this is the capacitor that, that you see. 
So the C in that you will observe, that is the capacitance and input, is gain times AV times of X. Do you understand? So the capacitor that you were originally saying, the impact of it in input is gain times of that capacitor. And similarly, in the output, it is simply X. So you will see the same capacitance uh, effect as that of the capacitor value. So this is actually a very critical capacitor that needs to be uh, understood and analyzed properly. Why? Because your uh, input node, so this is your input node, right? This is your output node. And uh, at this node, when we talk about poles, we'll come to that concept as well. When we say pole, a pole is one by RC, right? So your R and C defines your pole. And in a response like this, the bandwidth is actually defined by your pole, right? So ideally, what do you want? You want your bandwidth to be as high as possible, right? So for that, what should happen? Your capacitance should be as low as possible, right? But when you observe this particular input node, In this particular input node, if you observe that your capacitor that you observe in input, the capacitor increases drastically. So which actually reduces which actually reduces your pole value. So ultimately it reduces your bandwidth. So the critical capacitance that defines your bandwidth is actually this uh, CGS. So it is very uh, CGD, this capacitor, which is between your input and output terminal. So it is very important to analyze this particular capacitor. Is this clear? Can and, you repeat uh, so, the last part you said about CGS? Yeah. Uh, no, we are not talking about CGS. We are only talking about CGD right now. The yeah. thing we are talking about is CGD, Miller, uh, Miller's capacitor and Miller theorem. Uh, here uh, in, in the input node, the capacitance is gain times x. So the yes. value of capacitance is high, so the bandwidth will be less. Yes. Yeah, because so. the pole's value will reduce. This is your pole. And uh, since we are talking about poles and zeros, so let me give you uh, another information, but just keep it in your mind. It is very important. First of all, when you have a circuit, what you need to do is you need to find out how many AC nodes you have in your particular circuit. What do I mean by AC node? So let's say if this is your circuit, right? Voltage source between that terminal and between that node and ground. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. So let's say uh, for this particular circuit, yeah, so let's say we have, we have this basic circuit, right? CS amplifier, VDD. Now the question is, when I give my input, sign AC input here, how many nodes in this particular circuit can have AC in them, like AC component in them? So first of all, how many nodes are here? A, B, C, D. Four nodes you can observe, right? There are four nodes in this whole circuit. Now, in this particular circuit, when I am applying my uh, sinusoid to, let's say, the skate node C, my question is, out of these four nodes, how many nodes can have AC component in them? Where, uh, where all can see. you see at uh, AC? So yeah, definitely we'll see an AC component at B, right? Because it is a floating node. So it can have an AC component. What about A? Will A see any AC component in it? 
No. No. It will be only DC. It, it is. It will only be DC. So this is a only DC node, right? This is an only DC node. Whereas your V out is AC plus DC node. Here you will have both AC as well as DC values. We do bias it first, right? So there is a DC voltage over which your AC overlaps. What about node D? This is again AC plus DC. What about node D? Uh, DC. Only DC node. The AC current goes through that. Uh, I mean, in a common source circuit. Uh, yeah. At the source side, we have a capacitor connector. During the AC analysis, we short the capacitor and uh, RS also gets shorted. Okay. And only DC flows through that RS and the AC flows through that capacitor connector. Yes. Yes. But that is the condition. Okay. So this is one case, right? Now let's draw a source degenerate circuit. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes. Please go Ma ahead. Why A is called, why A is only DC node? Why can't it be AC? So, yeah, that's a very good question. So, the thing is, your A, first of all, it has been already, uh, it has VDD with it, right? So, yes. now, uh, after that node having VDD, so it will always stay at VDD. So, that cannot have any AC, AC voltage. No, but... but but when we apply a small incremental change at G gate, then uh -huh. there will be small incremental change in current as well, right? So yes. current will be flowing from D to S, only D to S. So the incremental change is the actually AC. Yes. Ah, but so uh, yeah, so uh, whenever, so what I'm saying is this VDD, this node will never change its voltage it will stay VDD only. This ground will always stay ground only. See, when there are uh, fixed voltage nodes, like where you actually provide the supply, you cannot change their voltages. They are already fixed. Now, where you can change the uh, voltages or where you can change them actually is at the nodes where they are not directly supplied with a battery or let's say with a source. That is the idea. Now, when you look Look at this node B. This node is not directly connected to any source, right? Yes, ma'am. Not a DC, not an AC. So this particular uh, particular node can uh, take up both AC as well as DC voltage. That's why this node is known as floating node. Okay, ma'am, I understand. understand. Yeah. So that's why the node is called floating node. Now, if you observe, uh, when we are drawing the circuits, also we draw like this right for gate also gate coupling also so we don't directly provide gate voltage rather we uh, let it flow through a resistor to make this node a floating node because when there is a floating node it gives you the advantage that uh, you can have both ec as well as dc uh, voltage at that particular node but that is not possible with the fixed nodes. Like when, let's say, this VDD is a fixed node. This ground node is a fixed node. But here B is a floating node. Now in this case, your VN is also a floating node. Getting my point? Yes, ma'am. I got it. Yeah. Now, so coming to the second circuit. This is the basic source degenerate circuit, right? Now again here, how many nodes do we have? Let's see. Let's just mark all the nodes. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now out of these F nodes, how many nodes are AC nodes and how many nodes are DC nodes over here? Um, uh, three only. Three. 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 E will be AC nodes. Why? Because these are floating nodes. Right? So whenever you see a floating node, that node can be considered as an AC node. And other than that, all the nodes which are fixed, they are DC nodes. Now, why I'm talking about this is, when we say how many poles you will see uh, or you'll observe in your circuit, 
you can get a direct idea from number of floating nodes or number of ac nodes because number of ac nodes or floating nodes is equal to number of poles in the system so this actually gives you the number of poles in the system okay and when we say what will be the value of those poles so the pole is represented by 1 upon rc where this is the r at that particular pole so resistance at that particular node and capacitance at that particular node this will give you the value of pole now why do you need pole as i already mentioned when there is a transfer function you want to see let's say your bandwidth of your system how would you define your bandwidth so the very first node that you encounter till that node whatever the frequency is or whatever the frequency of that particular first pole is that is your bandwidth of the system where you'll get the constant gain right so it is very important to understand uh, the capacitors and resistors at, uh, resistances at each and every node to find out the uh, behavior of your system am i making sense are you following Yes, this is uh, related to Bode's plot. Used to plot yes. the plot. Yes. Yes. See, ultimately, oh, uh, uh, when we talk about frequency, like poles, zeros, everything, so Bode's plot comes into picture. That's where you will find your bandwidth, gain bandwidth product, everything. Your phase margins, gain margin, everything you calculate from your uh, Bode plot. So, Bode plot is very important for uh, your AC analysis. frequency dependence uh, so ma'am for if if suppose uh, i want to increase my bandwidth uh, yeah. so that means uh, that either c or r i should should be reduced right then yes we can increase yes okay so that is the idea but there is always a trade off now mm -hmm. see uh, when we talk about uh, these particular uh, poles so ideally what we say that input resistance is infinite right ideally speaking for a, a transistor your input resistance is infinite so that means this particular node will always give a pole at your zero so we don't consider that particular pole what we calculate is the rest of them like this uh, is sorry, neglected I follow you uh, which one you are saying which we don't this, uh, do this not input, consider input 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 i cannot see your uh, cursor that is okay okay because what is is in is infinite right the moment z in is infinite your pole will be zero yeah so pole will be let's say at zero hertz so there is already a pole present at your zero now we don't Uh, consider this particular pole rather we look into other poles which are present and the other remaining poles will actually define your bandwidth because the pole which is already present at zero cannot define the bandwidth right then your system doesn't have any bandwidth mm -hmm. yeah so uh, the remaining will define your bandwidth now in this particular case you have one pole which is other than your uh, zero frequency pole and how do you define this particular pole so what is the value of pole at p it is 1 by r what will be the value of r it is z out right whatever is the uh, like uh, impedance at output node with yeah. c out whatever the capacitance you see at the output node so this is how you calculate the poles and with poles you get the idea of bandwidth okay so, yeah. yeah so this is how you find the poles from the ac nodes that you have mom by uh, c out uh, we mean that uh, the path the coupling you can say that we connect from pole b to b out sorry i could not follow you uh, you have written p b equal to 1 by z out into uh, c out Yes. So is is C out that coupling capacitor that we connect at the output? So 
it will be uh, the cumulative effect of all the capacitors over here so in this particular circuit if you observe very carefully this particular uh, capacitance will divide into two parts right so you will have your c in you will have your c out over here no, so it's basically, now uh, c out when i say c out uh, that means let's say c out dash which is actually cdb plus c out so the resulting capacitance that you get it's like the total cumulative effect of all the capacitors that are present at that particular node and all the resistances that can appear at that particular node you uh, get the product of them and one by the product will give you the pool got it got it yeah so that's why it is very important to understand the capacitive behavior of uh, your system now uh, moving on so we know that a basic mosfet structure right so between oxide and gate so we have always considered that source and body are shorted now what i am considering is let's say the body is not shorted to source now source and body are two different terminals so what will be the effect that you will observe so that is the question okay so the voltage that we apply at uh, let's say these two are both are grounded the voltage that you apply at gate is vg the voltage that you apply at body is vb okay now we all know that the moment you apply a gate voltage you will observe some charge accumulation or depletion over here right so basically change in charge will happen is this clear to everyone there will be a change in charge at this point right with the change in voltages right and what is the capacitance it is dq by dv so when there is change in charge with change in voltage so definitely there is a capacitor coming into picture and there is another capacitor which is already fixed is because of this oxide which is the oxide capacitor we call it c ox it is given by epsilon ox by t ox per unit area these capacitors are per unit area okay now we know that there is a capacitor so this particular capacitor is called c ox this particular capacitor is called cd we call it depletion capacitance so if you look at a simple structure of this how it will look like it will appear as vg then there is a capacitor c ox again in series there is another capacitor which is cd and it is connected to vb right now talking about gm what is gm transconductance transconductance current times uh, uh, current upon voltage i upon v differentiation of uh, uh, vg is yes current upon voltage so let's say i want to find gmb that is the change in current with change in my body voltage because till now we considered gate voltage drain voltage source was always uh, shorted for n, uh, n mos and source and uh, body were always shorted and source was grounded always now i'm saying i'm introducing another voltage that is body voltage vb so what will be the transconductance because of my this particular body voltage that is what i want to analyze so what will happen if i write it like uh, i can write it as 
id upon vg into vg upon vb i can write it like that this right and this id upon vg we know already what is this id gm. by vg gm it is gm, GM. into vg by vb now this is the factor that we actually need to find out like what is this vg by vb if we find that we can uh, uh, get the value or expression for gmb so now let's try and find out this uh, vgb okay so vg there is a capacitor c ox there is another capacitor c d and there is another vb now let's say this particular point is v surf so this is the surface potential right so v surf is the potential at the very surface or interface of your oxide and substrate layer so if uh, this is the case now i can write gmb is gm vg by vc into vc by vb right so let's say now first what we are going to find out we are going to find out vg by vc so how would we find out so we will consider only one potential that is vg of oh, vsurf this is vsurf this is cd and will ground the other terminal it is vb so if i want to find what is the potential of uh, v vc yes what is vc or vsurf how will we find vsurf it is actually the potential drop across this capacitor right so it is 1 by cd vg upon 1 by cd plus 1 upon cx <coughs> So V surf is one by C D V G C ox plus C D by C D into C ox. This is cancel. C ox upon C ox plus C D into V G. So actually V surf by V G is known as gate control have you ever came across this term gate control before uh, ma'am i mean uh, i know only we need to take uh, for a dc gate to voltage would be zero ma'am sorry um, with the current flow between gate is zero ma'am no so gate control tells you about uh, by changing your gate voltage how your surface potential changes like what you want whatever voltage you are applying at your gate it should directly come across your surface right there should not be any drop across your oxide or any losses across anywhere oh, but yeah. that is not true what actually happens is uh, the voltage that you apply at gate and what you actually get at your surface which is Uh, basically, uh, the cause for your inversion and for your MOSFET to turn it on, that voltage is very less, and it is never equal to one. So that factor is known as gate control. So for uh, so the idea is uh, when we uh, go for newer uh, like new generation MOSFETs or we want better MOSFETs. the first factor that comes to our mind or first thing that we want to improve is gate control like we want the majority of voltage that is being applied to the gate should come across the surface rather than being dropped across any other point because it is a loss right it goes into loss so that's right 
So this uh, VSERF by VG is actually known as gate control and it is denoted by M. So VSERF by VG is COX upon COX plus CP. This is also denoted by M. So what is the factor that we wanted? We wanted VG by VSERF, right? So VG by VSERF will be 1 upon M. So this is one factor that we have got. Now what was the second term that we wanted? We wanted VSERF by VB. We wanted VSERF by VB. Now in this case, let's put the other voltage to ground. We'll only have VB and here we have VSERF. So how do we write VSERF? It is Cox of 1 by Cox into Vb upon 1 by Cox plus 1 by Cd. This is Cd by Cox plus Cd into Vb. So V search by Vb is CD by COX plus CD. Now we have got all the values, right? So we'll simply substitute. So GN is GN into V surf by VB into VG by V surf. So that is GM into CD by COX plus CD into COX plus CD by COX. So GMB is GM into CD by Cox. This is what we are getting. Now, if we I want to simplify, so one by m is Cox by Cox plus Cd by Cox. So one by m is one plus Cd by Cox. So CD by COX is 1 by M minus 1. So GMB is GM 1 by M minus 1. So this is the factor that you get. And uh, mind you one thing that uh, this GMB is not very small. If you observe very carefully, we always say that GDS is very, very small than your GM, right? There is always around three times, uh, three orders of difference, like three orders, two orders of difference in GM and GDS. But when we talk about GMB, GMB is actually, there is only one order of difference. So GMB is very close to GM. So it's not very less like GDS. So if there is any, uh, like uh, we always have to consider the case, just in case if your source and body are not shorted, then you will see a significant difference in your results because of these uh, effects, like because of this uh, GMB. And then your uh, C uh, CSP will also come into picture. So all those factors will also come into picture. So just keep in mind that GMB is not very small and it is considerable amount. So you have to consider GMB. It is not small as GDS. So if we write the sequence of uh, GM, so it is like GM is uh, small, like it is the largest, GM is largest, then you will have GMB, then you will have GDS. So this is the sequence of your transconductance in, in particular. Uh, in, a, in a given transistor. 
is this clear? So the transcurrent discipline sequence is clear to everyone. Is there any doubt in this discussion? No, ma'am. Yeah, it's clear. It's clear, no, right? <laughs> now, with this, let's uh, start with the problems that I have for today. So if you look into this particular configuration, this is drain, gate, and source. So what is this configuration? Voltage divider bias, ma'am. Sorry? Voltage divider bias. No, no. I'm talking about your uh, uh, amplifier. What type of amplifier is this? Common drain. Yes, it is a CD amplifier. Because you are getting your output from source and giving input through gate. So it is a common drain amplifier. Now for this common drain amplifier, let's quickly solve what is asked. Find the GN. So we have to find GN for the given transistor. Here VTH is 1 volt. KW by L is 2. Volt square. Lambda is 0 0.01 volt inverse. CGS is 10 picofarad. CGD is 2 picofarad. Then RL is 2. 2 kilo ohm. R1 is 5 kilo ohm. R2 is 5 kilo ohm. C1 and C2 are 10 microfarads. Cl is 100 picofarad. VDD is 10 volts. So how do you find GM? What is the formula for GM? This is the formula for GM, right? KW by L, VGS minus VTH. Basic formula that we know. Now, here it is given that this is 10 volts. R1 and R2 are equal 5k and 5k. So, the gate voltage will be how much? 5 volts. Vg equal to 5 volts. Now, you have your Vg. So, Gn is kW by L. Sorry. 8 millisiemens. 8 millisiemens what? Answer. Transconductance. Transconductance is 8 millisiemens. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's solve. Is it really 8 millisiemens? No, it's not. How are you getting 8 millisiemens? So GM is uh, 2. How are you getting 8 millisiemens? Oh, sorry, ma'am. I thought uh, we, we need to find Vs also. No? Yeah, we have to find Vs, right? So see, Vs is a floating node over here. So you cannot write directly Vgs value. So 4 minus Vs. So this is the expression that you have. So if you can find Vs, you can ultimately get your GM. How to find Vs? So... If you see what is Vs, Vs is Id into Rs, right, or RL. Your Vs is Id into RL. Id is Kw by, Kw by 2L, Vgs. Vg minus Vs minus Vth of whole square. So in this expression, Id is okay. Here there is no value of Id given. Right? Yeah, Id is not given. We have to find Id. So Id equal to k w by two l. Vg which is 5 minus Id into RL was given 2 kilo ohm minus 1 whole square. 
so the here you will get a quadratic equation in id right so from here we'll get two values for id and uh, you can solve this equation later i'll quickly write down the values for uh, id so We can write it like uh, in terms of ID or in terms of VS directly. I'm going to go VS chai, so let's write it as VS so directly, VS by R. So we'll get the expression or values in terms of VS only. This is VS. So the two values of VS that I have uh, found out are Vs is 2.81 volts and other than this 5.69 volts. Now out of these two, which Vs is correct? Which value of Vs is correct? How to check which value is correct? The first one is correct. So we have to check whether the MOSFET is in saturation with uh, either of Okay, so very basic uh, idea that we have is for an NMOS, your VGA should be greater than VDH, right? Now your VGA is 5 volts minus VS should be greater than VTH, which is 1 volt, right? If you substitute this value, you will get a value greater than 1. What about this value? If you substitute this, will you get a value greater than 1? No, right? So it is incorrect. So the value of Vs is actually 2.81. Now when you substitute this value over here, the value of Gn that you get is 2.4 millisiemens. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, what about other values? Why capacitors are given? Is there any role of capacitor in this particular question? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Actually, I have a doubt that uh, uh, in this question, lab time is given 0 0.01. Yes. So, why are we not considering it in the formula for ID, like 1 plus lambda VDS? Uh, 1 plus lambda VDS, no? Uh, in the ID formula. Why yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I, yeah. I get your point. So what you are saying is, let's say if ID is KW by 2L, VGS minus VTH whole square, 1 plus lambda VDS. Now the thing is, your GN is DID by DVG, DVGS. So you will have KW by 2L into 2 VGS minus VTH into 1 plus lambda VDS, right? So this is what you are saying. So why didn't we consider this extra term? Mm -hmm. yeah. right. hmm. That's a good point. So why didn't we consider that one? But if we want to consider that one, so do we know VDS also? Yeah, we do know VDS. So if we say like GM is, let us consider that as well. So KW by L. So again, in this formula also, for this basic uh, ID formula, here also there will be 1 plus lambda VDS factor will be there. So it will change your answer uh, slightly if you consider that lambda VDS one. 
this is i didn't consider but uh, yeah that's a good point we we would have considered that then okay let's see if ideas there will be tool vg minus vs minus vth of square one plus how much is the lambda 0.01 into 10 minus vs Okay, so then your equation will be actually a cubic equation, right? If you can see from here, you have to solve a cubic equation. And for that cubic equation, you'll get three values. Out of three, you have to segregate one. That is when you'll get your answer. But uh, to be on uh, safer side, if we see this uh, lambda is uh, like very small, right? 0 0.01. And if we say that we have got Vs of 2.81. So the factor lambda Vs will be 0 0.0281, right? This factor that will appear the Vs that we will get because of lambda will be very small. So we can neglect this value because we are not considering the small values, right? So we can simply neglect them. And uh, yeah, it also depends on uh, the values of options that you get. So in options, sometimes if the options are uh, very far apart, so then uh, whether you consider this lambda VDS value or you don't consider, you'll get an answer because the range will be there. But if the values are very small, then you have to be like very precise with your calculations. But uh, here I remember uh, the options, I have not kept the options, but the options were not that, uh, like, like not cl so close by. So that's why I approximated and like I moved ahead without considering lambda. Uh, am I clear? Like, yeah. Yeah. So you can, so lambda, we generally, yeah. when okay. lambda, lambda, sorry. No, 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 you can't be okay. Yeah, yeah. So what I was saying is, when lambda is given, we generally consider lambda only for your uh, R outs. Like uh, when we have to calculate the R out, there only we ma majorly consider the effect of lambda. Otherwise, generally in GM and all, we approximate it and we don't consider lambda. Like, yeah. Only lambda we consider when we have to consider this R out set out calculations there we consider lambda otherwise we generally uh, don't consider the value of lambda in calculations we can approximate them because you have already observed here right like the lambda v, uh, vs value that we were getting for this particular calculation to solve this equation that value was very very small so we can simply neglect that value and also for this 10 times volume, maybe it is 1.1. So it will not change your values so much. So we can simply make it. Yeah. Okay. So with this, let's uh, move on to the next problem. So in this problem, it is like find the gain V out by V in. So what is the gain? The gain is, simple gain is GM into R out or GM into Z out. So for a given circuit, For this given circuit, we have we have already calculated Gn, which is 2.4 millisiemens, 
we have to calculate r out or z out so what will be the value of z out so it is this rl then there will be the impedance coming from the source node so the impedance coming from source node small rs is given by 1 by gm so the one coming from source node and then the r out uh, r not that we have which is 1 by lambda id so z out is rl parallel 1 by gm parallel r not okay so this is uh, 1 by One by GM plus one by R naught plus one by RL. So that is one by two point four by thousand. R naught is much. ID is given here. Okay, from here we can find ID also. VS we know. Vs is 2.81 volt. So ID is Vs by RL 2.81 by <coughs> RL was how much? 2K. ID is 1.4. 1.4 milliampers uh, 1 by 4 milliampers uh, lambda is 0 0.01 into 1.4 milli this is plus 1 by 1 by 2k okay. oh, here it is 1 by 0 0.01 into 1.4 so the resultant z out that you actually get is uh, after solving this it is equal to 343 ohms when you solve this When you solve this, you will get a Z out of 343 ohms. So your uh, gain is V naught by V in is GM that is 2.4 millisiemens into 343 ohms. So V naught by V in is okay. How, how much should be the V naught by V in? This is a CD configuration, right? So what should be your gain? Less than one. Yeah, gain should always be less than one, and here you are getting 0 0.82, which is less than one. So this also uh, tells you like uh, you can basically tally your results with this, whether you are going right or you have done some calculation mistakes. These. Ma'am. Yes. Can you draw the small signal model for this circuit? For this circuit. Yeah. We did not draw it here. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. For this uh, CS wale ke liye, uh, CD ke liye, let's draw. Yes. And how, we got about, uh, R, R, how did we get? The formula for the R L Achha. So it actually comes from your uh, small signal model only. GM into VGS. R not RL RL to ground. Now from gate you have
R1, R2. Then there is a C1. And here you have a lean. R1, R2, RL. Source. This is grounded. This is grounded and then you have like C2 and CL. C2 is like from source to, it is like C2 and series with CL. Then they are connected to ground, gate, brain, source. So this is how your uh, circuit looks like, right, currently. Here you have your V out. So it's, if you observe very carefully, your R naught is connected between V out and ground. So we can change it like this can come down and we can draw it as this R naught to ground. We can draw it like this. Yes. Right? So now C. You have your input. Let's say there are, uh, so currently uh, let us consider only resistive circuit. So we don't consider the capacitive circuit. So in this circuit, the current that is flowing through this uh, R1, oh, sorry, RL and R0 is GM into VGS, right? The current flowing through RL and R0, parallel, parallel, R0 is GN VGS, right? So if I say what is my V out, V out will be how much? GN VGS into RL parallel R0. Now, if you observe from here, as no current is flowing, this is short. Here we have V in, the same voltage we have V in over here, and this is V S again. So V out is G in, V in minus V S. V S is again actually V out, right? parallel are not so V out 1 plus GN is equal to GN V in RL parallel are not V out by V in is GN RL parallel are not by 1 plus GN considering Okay, so it is RL parallel R0 by one by GM plus one. So this is the gain that we are getting. Now when we say Z out is RL parallel R0 parallel 1 by GM. So that is Z out is RL parallel R0 into 1 by GM. From RL parallel R0 plus 1 by GM. So And let's see if this is the Z out. So V out by V in 
is gn into rl parallel r naught into 1 by gn by rl parallel r naught plus 1 by gn these two cancel so we have by in as uh, r parallel r naught by I'll tell or not plus one way gene Ma'am in the second <laughs> last line I think Is there a mistake in any line? In the, in the second last line Second last line Here? Uh, we out into 1 plus gm it should be oh no no we no into 1 into plus gm, one plus GM R R yes 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 gm into rl parallel r not with uh, gm v not uh, into rl parallel r not so 1 plus gm <laughs> rl parallel r not yes this is what we are getting right this is what we are getting as our transfer function or from here what have we got we have got the same same expression right see this is the v out by v in that we have got by solving uh, the KCL or ultimately gm into r out say you are getting the same value right it's called the same form v out by v in is gm RL parallel R naught by 1 plus GM RL parallel R naught. So we are getting the same expression, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, but uh, the last small signal model, uh, there is some technical. Sorry, sorry. I could without, not get without, without the small signal model, it does some no no so uh, first of all what people did they solved the small signal model they got the expression now if you observe very carefully this uh, this is gm right normal gm normal gm ko hata doge to uske baad the expression that is the remaining expression that you get is like wo hota hai wahi hota hai rl parallel r not parallel gm so it's from a, there also gm is, uh, is effective transconductance into output one by rate. sorry gm is effective transconductance into output resistance ha huh, gain is uh, transconductance is, uh, into output resistance right to us form me they have uh, simplified it so ultimately from both the ways you will get the same expression wahi expression hai it was just simplified so for you to remember ki okay source say how much is resistance that you see one by gm you see then rl and r naught so simply likhne ke liye this is the expression but actually when you calculate uh, your uh, transfer function usme bhi you will get the same expression so both are one and the same theek hai na yes any doubts no. clear right yeah so okay oh yeah we skipped this question right third question <clears throat> okay so let's solve this question so in this question uh, find the upper cut off frequency of the gain so you have to find the upper cut off frequency of the gain how do you find the upper cut off frequencies Yes, we discussed it right now, right? How to find the frequencies? What is one frequency? By, uh, one by RC. Okay. Or if we want it in hertz, then it is one by two pi RC. This is in hertz. This is reading per second. Okay. So in this particular figure, In this particular circuit, first of all, how many AC nodes do we have? <coughs> AC nodes? Two. Two. Gate and source. Gate and source. 
so what we will do is we'll find our uh, frequencies for both like both these nodes and whatever frequency comes out to be minimum we'll report that what why the okay. cut off frequency hai na so when there is that is what i was saying na ki ye agar band structure hai tumhara oh, sorry frequency response hai tumhara and you want to find the cut off frequency so cut off frequency is defined by the first pole that appears in first pole matlab the... lowest frequency If the lower cut off frequency as is as when what what is given on sorry in this question upper cut off frequency is asked but okay if, so uh, see lower. when upper and lower ka concept kab aata hai let's say if this is a band pass filter right if this is a band pass filter then there you will have like two frequencies cut off so there will be a lower cut off and higher cut off but when there is a response which is like this then you don't have uh, upper and lower waha pe right yes so is no there will be one frequency and uh, cut off frequency means the smaller frequency minimum frequency so in this particular uh, yeah in this particular circuit first of all let's calculate uh, let's say this is 1 and this is 2 so at 1 what is z in what will be the z in that will observe in 1 uh r1 parallel r2 r1 parallel r2 yes it is not infinite right now so r1 parallel r2 so it is how much r1 parallel r2 is 55 2.5 k and what about c in uh, that will be c1 uh, that will be how much c1 c1 will it only be c1 plus cj3 c1 aayega yahan se see now here your miller capacitance is actually cgs it's not cgd anymore can you see that do we have to consider only the capacitance between ac nodes yes no so see miller capacitance is between your input and output node ke beech mein the capacitance that comes or resistor that comes it gives you the miller effect okay so between the two nodes input so and output this was a if this was a common source amplifier we would consider cgd yeah then if it was a common source then you would have considered cgd as your miller capacitor but here it is cgs which gives you the miller capacitor and your uh, this uh, cgd the capacitor that you have cgd where will it come it will, uh, will, uh, will it appear in input or in output CGD, will it appear in input or output? Input. Input, right? So you will have your CGD in input. So your CGD in parallel with, so plus your CGS as Miller capacitor, right? So that means CGS into one minus AV. What else? What else will come into picture? Uh, C1, C1, uh, C1. Maybe you can bypass it. Like your AC signal can simply bypass through C1, okay. so we can neglect C1. But we'll definitely see the effect of CGD and uh, CGS, right? So this is your uh, resultant capacitor C. And, uh, so for calculating C, we have to consider the Miller capacitance and the uh, Input so what if whatever capacitor comes at that particular node, at input node, okay. and definitely you will see a Miller capacitor. Now it depends also what type of circuit it is. Let's say if it is a cas code amplifier, then 
जो इनपुट वाला टर्मिनल है देर यू विल नॉट सी योर मिलर कैप इनपुट वाले में आउटपुट वाले में सो बट यू हैव टू सी कि भाई कौन कौन से नोड्स आर कमिंग इन टू पिक्चर एंड वॉट टाइप ऑफ कैपेसिटर इज देर एंड वेदर इट इज अ मिलर कैपेसिटर और नॉट एंड हाउ इट इज कमिंग इन टू पिक्चर एट दैट पर्टिकुलर नोड दैट यू हैव टू ऑब्जर्व ठीक है सो हियर यू हैव सी जी डी सी जी एस और वन माइनस ए वी सो सीन आ जाएगा कितना हाउ मच इज योर सीन सी जी डी इज गिवन रेट सी जी एस इज टेन पिको सी जी डी इज टू पिको टू पिको फेरेट प्लस टेन पिको फेरेट गेन वी ऑलरेडी फाउंड आउट हाउ मच वॉज द गेन वन माइनस पॉइंट एट टू सो द फ्रीक्वेंसी दैट यू गेट वन अपॉइंट टू बाई आर सी आर एन सी एन इज एक्चुअली आई डिट कैलकुलेट इट वॉज सिक्सटीन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव मेगा हर्ट्स सो दिस इज द फ्रीक्वेंसी दैट यू गेट फॉर योर फर्स्ट नोट विच इज योर इनपुट नोट Uh, similarly, for second node, we'll again calculate the Z out. So Z out is how much? अभी हमने किया था ना Z out. We found out right? Z out का value. Three forty three ohms. Three forty three ohms. Z out is three forty three ohms. And the next thing we need to find out is C out. So C out में what are the capacitors that are in uh, output? So let's say C two is bypassed. So we only have the effect of C L. Uh, yeah. So we will have the effect of C L C G S again. So it is C L plus C G S one minus one upon E V. Uh, minus one plus one upon E V. Yeah. So yes. Anything else that is left? There will be another capacitor, right? C D T. C D P will also come in parallel. So here, plus C D P. This will also come in parallel. So the C D P is there. Now C L का value पता है, C G S पता है, C D P पता है क्या? Okay, CDB is not here now, so we can consider CDB very small, so we can neglect. अगर CDB दिया होता तो we would have used CDB also. Ma'am, uh, yeah. in this question is are the body and source uh, like connected? Is it given? Yes, like it is not mentioned separately, right? Otherwise, it would have been mentioned separately that body and source are not connected. If if they are not connected, so. वी शुडेंट टू so that's why cdb should also come into picture but since the value is not given and uh, we'll consider that the value is very small so we can almost neglect that capacitor so yeah after calculating this value uh, frequency 1 so frequency 2 what we get is 1 upon 2 pi z out c out the value that we get is 4.54 megahertz 
So yeah, which will give you the cutoff frequency? We discussed, right? The smaller one will give us the cutoff frequency. So the frequency of cutoff is 4.54 megahertz. Is this clear? Any doubts? Yes, any doubts? No. No. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. So here comes a mirror circuit. Let's explore the circuit and slowly we'll have a few more circuits like this. So this is a perfect mirror circuit. So the idea of mirror circuit is actually mirrors the currents between two branches. And how it mirrors, what is the mechanism, everything, we'll look into when we come to this problem. If this problem is not done in this, uh, this particular session, I'll bring this problem again in the next session because these are something, like these are few problems which need to be addressed. And these are very good problems and they do have their practical applications. So we definitely need to understand them. So yeah, starting with this problem. So here it is given that your R is 3.7K. It is given that WP is four times of WN. For in-channel MOSFET, mu n c ox, mu n c ox by two is 3.15 millisiemen per volt. For P, it is mu n c ox, mu p c ox by two is 0.788. Vt is 0.3 for both, and assume the device to be one micrometer long so l is one now what should be the width wn such that the bias current should be 153 id is 153 <laughs> microns okay ma'am yes can i can i ask you something when in the previous previous question you have considered CGS at the output also. Why is it so? Input, it is basically uh, between gain and, gain and source, correct? Capacitance. Yes, correct. So why you are considered at the output? V in is okay. V in is uh, okay. So why right. V out, we are considered V uh, gate, gate capacitance. No, it has come as an output, C, no ma'am? See, see, the capacitor is connected between gate and source. It is not only a gate capacitor. Rather, yeah. it is a capacitor connected between gate and source. That's right. Now, here, gate is our input node, source is our output node. Yes. Correct? Correct. So, this capacitor, that is CGS, acts as a Miller capacitor in this particular question for this configuration. Okay. okay. Right? So, it's duplicated. So, yeah, that's why since it is a Miller capacitor, it will appear in both input as well as output. Okay. Okay. The formula Thanks. remains the same, but okay. yeah. So okay. it is very important. So that's what I said. It all depends on how your transistor is connected. Like what is the configuration your transistor has been connected into, which makes uh, uh, the difference, basically. Because earlier when we were seeing a basic CS amplifier, there the Miller capacitor was CGD. But okay. here actually CGD is the input capacitor. It's not even mm -hmm. output, it's input capacitor. And here CGS is actually a Miller capacitor. Earlier it was an input capacitor. So it okay. all depends on how your transistors are connected. Okay. So you have to understand the terminals, like all your nodes very carefully and uh, look into which node is connected where. And the best way is, uh, if it is very difficult to analyze from this uh, basic schematic, we can always come back to our uh, small signal model. And small yeah. signal model really helps us a lot when we are uh, confused at any point of time. Because sometimes yeah. it might get confusing, uh, like looking at this basic schematic and coming up with, OK, which capacitor is connecting where. But the moment you draw a small signal model, it 
becomes very clear like which capacitor is where where to connect what which node is grounded which node is like ac everything becomes clear so it is always yeah. advisable the moment until you are very confident better you draw a small signal model then start solving because the okay. chances of error reduces okay yeah thank you ma'am thank you yes yeah. uh sandhya uh, you have any doubt you can unmute no, yourself no ma'am no ma'am no doubts no okay. ma'am so actually you raised your hand so that's why I thought. yeah let's go at so in this particular question see these are the givens it is given that current that is flowing through the transistors is 1 153 microamperes for this particular current we have to find wn Now, considering all transistors are in saturation first, so all transistors are in saturation. That is the first priority. Secondly, the current that is flowing from VDT to ground will remain constant, right? So all the transistors will share the same current. So if it is transistor one, two, three, four, <coughs> all these transistors will carry the same current that is one fifty three microamperes. So let's say if the current that is flowing through transistor two is mu p c ox w by two l, mu p c ox w by two l. Vgs minus Vth whole square is equal to mu n. So between two and three, let's say. So this is two, three C ox W by two L Vgs minus Vth whole square. <coughs> Here it is given that. Uh, Mu P C ox W L W N zero point seven eight eight into W L by one one micro yes one micrometer by one micrometer V G S minus V T H whole square. Oh, sorry, it is V S G in this case. V S G P minus V S G into three point one five W N by one micrometer V G S minus V T H of whole square. It is given that uh, WP is four times of WL, so it is zero point seven eight eight one micrometer into four WN VSG minus VTH whole square is three one five one micrometer VGS minus Vth whole square. So if you calculate it very carefully, you'll find out that these two factors are actually equal. Four into point seven eight eight gives you three point one five. So these two cancel. W and W and cancel. So what we are left with is Vsg minus mod Vth whole square is equal to Vgs minus Vth whole square. These two also cancel. It was given that Vth is equal. Like if it is three point three, so point three and minus point three, so mod may have so that will also cancel. So these two will also cancel. What we are left with is Vsgp is equal to Vgsn, right? Or for transistors, this was two and this was three. So it is given that uh, Vsg of two is equal to Vgs of three. We have got this. So V G G S. 
so this value vgs is equal with this vsg this is source So this value. Now if you observe from these uh, circuits, it is clearly evident that your like VG is shorted with VD, right? So from circuit, your VGS is equal to your VDS. This is also clear. And for all the transistors, your drop is equal. So now this VGS or VDS is equal. So see, this 2.5 volts is dropping across VSD1 plus VSD2 plus IDR plus VDS3 plus VDS4, right? This is how the voltage is getting dropped. Now here, 2.5 is we know that all the VSDs are equal since all the VSGs were equal all the VSGs, VSDs, v, everything is equal so we can write it as 4 times of <coughs> sorry. we can write it as <coughs> 4 times of VGS plus id into r now here we know id we know r we can find vgs right so 2.5 minus id was how much 153 micro into 3.79 k by 4 equal to vgs so the value of vgs is Um, how did we get uh, 2.5 equal to 4 into VGS plus IDR? Yeah, yeah, these drops. So here, this is VSD1, VSD2, VDS3, VDS4, right? Here VD and VG are equal. Here we calculated that for uh, like PMOS as well as NMOS, your VSG and uh, like uh, VGS both are equal, yes. right? And this is this will hold true for other pair of transistors also, right? Yes, ma'am. That means all the transistors will have same VGS or VSG, right? Yes. So it will bring us to that all the transistors will have equal drop between their source and drain. Okay. So that's how we came to this uh, 2.5 equal to 4 times of VGS plus IDR. Okay. Now here uh, we have got this value of VGS. How much is the value of VGS that we are getting? If you can calculate. Now once we are done with calculating VGS from here, the next thing that we can do is, see VGS is uh, 2.5 minus, <coughs> sorry, 133 micro, 3.79, K by 4. How much is this value? What is the value of VGS? Yeah, calculate and let me know. Then once you know the value of VGS, V uh, ID is how much? Mu n C ox W n by 2L. W n is what we want. 
VGS minus. Zero point four eight. Okay. So yeah, your transistor is turned on because it is greater than VTH. So always keep that in mind. Like the values, whether you are calculating are correct or not. So yeah, VGS we found out. Now what we are left with is WN is ultimate goal. So ID into two uh, two L mu N C ox. VGS minus VTH whole square. Yeah. So WN is 153 micro into 2 into 1 micro by mu C ox mu and C ox by 2 3.15 milli. So here 2 is already considered. 3.15 milli 0 0.48 minus 0 0.3 whole square. So what is the value of Wn? Let's quickly calculate what is the value of WN. And also, let me know the unit. Units are very important. Fourteen ninety nine nanometer. Fourteen ninety nine nanometer. Nanometers. So that makes it one point four nine nine micrometers, right? Yes, you are correct. See, units are very important. If you have 1499 nano micro, so it's like it's completely wrong. The answer is completely wrong. So be very careful with the units. I'll, I repeat it always uh, because even I do make mistakes with the units. But uh, yeah, units are very critical. So you always have to keep them in mind. Okay, so in the same circuit, now it says that lambda is given, which is volt inverse, 0 0.1 volt inverse. What is the small signal gain of the circuit? For this particular lambda, what will be the small signal gain for the given circuit? For this circuit. <coughs> So again here uh, we'll apply the simple formula that is gain equal to gm into z out. Okay. Gain is gm into z out. This is your input. This is your output. Now from here First of all, you have to find what is the Z out at this node. There are two PMOSs underneath drain drain node connected and EB drain drain connected. So there are two NMOSs underneath and two PMOSs above. So this resistance aega ZP, this resistance aega ZN. And these two will again come in parallel. So that is the idea. So what is the value of ZP? When you solve it, the value that you actually get expression is 2GDN plus GMN upon GDN square. That is what, uh, sorry, G, ye ZN ke liye. This is for ZN. And similarly for ZP, you will get 2GDP plus GMP 
upon gd p square Number, uh, how, how do we arrive to this? So yeah, this uh, actually it has to be solved. So again, small signal. If you go for small signal model, again, so you can get this uh, value. Small signal model. If this circuit ka pure ga solve karoge, to waha se you can get to this one. And there are uh, some shortcuts also. Ki dekho first of all, what is the node that you are observing from here? So drain node. So drain node ka the impedance that you see is one by uh, GDN plus uh, GMN. One by GDN plus one by GMN. So uh, like, just uh, I said, like RS is considered one by GMN. Like one by GMN. Yeah, this is the one by GMN. One by GMN. GD plus GM. GD plus GN. Isko approximate karke people do it by GD also. Kyuki GD or GM may uh, GD is smaller. So 1 by GD becomes a huge value. So it comes out to be uh, 1 by GD. So as people do look from like node say, node say, they ke. And when there are two transistors in series, to unka jo formula aata hai, it is already like. Uh, GM by GDP square shortcut me because this GDP jo hota hai, it is very small value so when there are two transistors in series to uska Z jo aata hai, it is approximately Z for Z for two transistors in series is GM upon gd square so this is what you get it is a, like approximate hota hai. but yeah ultimately aata wahi se hai. small signal models ko jab solve karte hai, to wahan se you get these formulas ultimately her formula ka source wahi hota hai. then you implement uh, like then you use your uh, approximations and all to further reduce your uh, expressions so yeah you solve karna padta hai. So I guess ye sir ne class me karvaya hoga, like session me. So you can check the course, and you can solve it on your own also. But you need a little patience because there are so many transistors. So correctly, sabko connect karke, you have to uh, solve the transfer functions and everything. Then you can get these. So yeah, for uh, the time being, <coughs> the. Expression of question, sir. It will be advanced only, ma'am. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, question, sir. Advanced only, ma'am. Advanced only, ma'am. Ma okay. I couldn't uh, get you. Uh, assignment questions are uh, a little bit uh, uh, somewhat more to tough only, ma'am. Uh, so yeah. So this is actually like a uh, PG level course. So yeah, questions are a little like they're not as easy as you see. Like there are real good use of problems and the, I guess this type of problem you might observe in the uh, assignment this week. Yes, ma'am. Simply, but uh, it, 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 it is taking more time, ma'am. That's right. Yeah, because see, the, num the number of transistors increase, it is really difficult. And if you go for, uh, like, as I'm saying, if you go on solving the small signal model, even you cannot draw that small signal model within a single page. So that will be yes. the scenario. So it will be very difficult. So that's why what people do is people uh, remember a few shortcuts, as I mentioned, like RS is 1 by GM, RD mm. is 1 by GD plus GM or 1 by GD. So by using these shortcuts and looking through the terminals, they simply write the Z out, which is like approximately more or less correct. So by using okay. shortcuts and all, people come up with the formula. Like when you solve like two transistors in series, so as I mentioned, right, the formula is already given. So this formula, when you solve using your small signal model, keeping two transistors in series, you will again get this one only. When you simplify and everything, the simplest formula is this one. Now what you do, you keep this in mind. So when you have to apply it, uh, or you have to solve a numerical, you can use these shortcuts 
and come up with the uh, like with the expressions and you can simply uh, use them for solving the exercise uh um, mm on some small doubt ma'am obtaining certificate from this course would be useful for a uh, integrated circuit system analog and mixer signal would be useful no ma'am oh, sorry i could not uh, get you can you uh, ma'am please uh, analog i mean actually i would like to start my career in analog and mixer signal ma'am obtaining okay. certificate from this uh, uh, course would be very useful no ma'am it is not undergraduate yes. well solving uh, getting... yes for analog and mix signal if you want to pursue an analog and mix signal this course will definitely help you it is yeah. somewhat uh, for, uh, high level only no ma'am yeah this is a advanced level course even uh, we do have like in iit gandhinagar also this course is offered and this is a pg level course like for post graduate students okay so yeah it know. is a advanced level course okay okay uh, i don't know whether for uh, in ptl whether it is like advanced or not but in it's our not institute not. level this is definitely an advanced level course this is not for ug students okay okay thank you thank you sir yeah so where were we okay so we still do have a few questions maybe we can take these questions next time let's finish this question which we were doing so yeah what i said we'll find this zn and zp now z out is simply z in parallel zp and <clears throat> sorry gain is gm into z out you know the gm simply you will use that for uh, this expression so that is the idea so if i'll give you the expression for gain <coughs> sorry it is minus gm into gm r not plus 2 r not by 2 So this is the final expression of gain that we'll get, and we're here considering that G M N is equal to G M P, R not N is equal to R not P, which is from above expressions only. We are getting these. So yeah, this is the final expression for gain. Now substituting the values, we'll get the gain as minus six two three. Six two three two point zero four volt by volt. This is the gain that we require from the given particular circuit. Is this clear? I guess there was a lot this week. But were you able to understand? Were you able to grasp? please go through the notes again please go through the lecture again and just in case if you have any doubts you can write me through my email or you can write as a youtube comment or please uh, next week we can discuss before starting uh, i uh, always join 10 15 minutes early so if you have any doubts you can uh, join and we can discuss in that uh, duration as well so are these questions and concepts clear to you today we uh, introduced a lot of new problems a lot of new concepts uh, could you grasp them just please go through the notes once again i know it was too much knowledge transfer this time but uh, yeah it does hurt it does and still we didn't uh, touch mirror problem like uh, current mirror circuits and all so we'll definitely do that next week so till now whatever we have solved or uh, whatever we have discussed today do you have any doubts any one of you Uh, which question? Okay, I don't have that question, right? Uh, what was the question? Anyways, <clears throat> mm. 
week four, right? Uh, okay, uh, which problem? Week four? Ma'am, any question after uh, question six? Seven? <coughs> seven are you talking about? Uh, yes, like M1, M2, M3. So M1 has an input, M3 has an yes, output. Sir. There is another yes. M2. Yes, ma'am. Let's see. Okay. So the question is, let's see this is. This is M2, which is a BMOS, M1, which is an NMOS, and there is an M3. Here we have output, and this is M3, VDD, ground. <coughs> okay, in the following circuit, GM1 is 1.6 millisiemens, GM2. 1.8 milli siemens gm3 is 2 milli siemens yeah see in this problem you find gmb the one that we discussed today <coughs> gmb1 is 0.32 gmb2 is 0.6 milli siemens gmb3 is 0.67 milli siemens <laughs> RD1 is 20.63 kilo ohm. RD2 is 23.89 kilo ohm. 23.89, yeah. And RD3 is 18 kilo ohms. Okay, so we have to find what? V out. By V in. So in this question, ultimately you have to find V out by V in. This is your V in. This point is your V out. This is drain, source, source, drain. See, one basic thing that we can do the moment we look into this problem is all the three transistors are in series. So a single current ID will flow through all these three transistors. Now let's write the current saturation current equation for M3, okay? M3, this is source, drain, and gate. Yeah. This being a PMOS, it is mu P. C ox W by 2L VSG minus VDH whole square right this is equal to M1 mu N C ox W by 2L VGS minus VDH whole square now carefully observe for this particular transistor V out is VG, V out is VD also. <coughs> Mu P C ox W by 2L V S is V D D minus V G is V out minus mod of V T H whole square mu N C ox W by 2L V G S so it is let's say V A okay so V N minus V A minus V T H of whole square now here if this expression was simply in terms of V out and V in we would have got our V out by V in right but there is this extra voltage V A 
that we need to calculate. If VA is found out, we simply substitute the value of VA and then we can do all the calculations plus minus and we'll finally find V out by V. That is the idea. Okay. Now, let's write the current equations for M1 and M2 again. M1 and M2. This was for M3 and M2. No, sorry, M1. Yeah. So it is mu n c x w by 2l v in minus v a minus v t h square is equal to this is again a PMOS. So source gate drain mu p c x w by 2l v g is 0. Oh, sorry, v s minus v g right. So Vs is V minus Vg is 0 minus mod of Vth whole square. <coughs> A3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, this one will get a relation with uh, like VA as a function of VN from this expression, right? Yes. Now, when you find this VA as a function of VN, what you will do? You will substitute this over here. Now, this expression will only be in terms of V out and V in. So, you have to segregate the terms for V out and V in and then you have to find it like you have to simply write V out by V in that is the idea is this clear um, can you explain again after what you said uh, See, VA is equal to function of V VA is function of V in right yes. so in place of V A what you will get is a expression like uh, with v a uh, like v a being replaced uh, in terms of some a function of v in hey na? okay then that will now put that in the v, v a will uh, yeah you will put that v a over here so if you observe very carefully from here also this side will be a function of v in and this side whole will be a function of v out <coughs> right yes. so now you have to separate out v out and v in and simply write v out by v in that is the part task. in this question the mu n c ox then mu p w n l is not given so no so gm diya hua na tumko when gm is given what is what does gm mean okay it's okay. Uh, mu n c ox w mu c ox w by l Vg is minus Vth, right? So the general idea in these multi-transistor questions is that we like, uh, the same current ID is flowing through all the transistors. Always, always that is the major, uh, like one of the equations that, see all the equations, usme, ya to you will apply KCL, majorly you will apply current law. And the uh, multi-transistors, usme always remember that one current will flow in series. So you can always write a KVL. See, you can always write a case, uh, KVL all the way from VDD to ground. That is one equation that always will be there. Other than that, what you can do, you can equate the current between two transistors. That is the second equation that you will get. Right? Or kya milega? So these are very basic, like, ye to milega hi. like you can write a KVL from VDD to ground and second you can equate the currents. These two are must and they these will be there. And you can find some other equations depending on how your transistors are connected and how their nodes are connected. Usse you will get another equation, one or two equations. So that's we try to, try to solve this using small signal model, then it will be very lengthy, I think. Huh. That's what I'm saying. See, small signal model, it is always a safe option. But the thing is, if you have 
तीन से चार से ट्रांजिस्टर्स हो गया और इवन इफ यू गो बियॉन्ड फोर ट्रांजिस्टर्स इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू एक्चुअली ड्रॉ द लाइक स्मॉल सिग्नल मॉडल एंड कीप ट्रैक ऑफ इट तो देर इट विल लीड टू एरर्स सो दैट्स व्हाई पीपल व्हाट पीपल डू इज दे सिंपली लुक इन टू द टर्मिनल्स एंड दे डू नो दैट हाउ मच रेजिस्टेंसेस अपीयर फ्रॉम ईच टर्मिनल और हाउ मच कैपेसिटेंस इज अपीयरिंग फ्रॉम ईच टर्मिनल दे सिंपली यूज दैट एंड दे सॉल्व द इक्वेशन लाइक दे सॉल्व द सर्किट्स दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चंस आर देयर अवेलेबल इन द बुक दैट यू रेकमेंडेड एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ दिस सेशन uh yeah there are problems in that book and uh, other than that uh, i have never explored the other reference books so maybe you can look into it which which book would you suggest like out of all that so given? the very first book that even we used to refer was this rasavi other than that uh, the books we have never uh, so i have personally never uh, uh, like uh, referred to so because our professor's notes were enough so i never had actually referred to any book but yeah you can look into these other two also so the foreign authors right so the, these books might be really good so maybe you can look into it this design And, of analog uh, cmos integrated circuits by mr gavi is good yeah that is this. definitely a good one and others to maybe you can refer to it and let me also know whether these books are like how are these books for the course because i have never referred to these books so yeah remember one last round the, yes. the last question that is solved i still didn't understand how we found z and n then p so this z and n z p actually you need to like uh, solve it so it's like uh, when there are two transistors connected end to end so it is like see if you observe very carefully it is night ek ka source node and dusre ka drain node so they are in series right so when you solve a combination so what you can do right to understand this take very simple uh, series circuit i'll tell you what you take this is your v in this is your v out now for this basic setup of two n moses you try and solve uh, the equations and find what is the z in that you are getting from here for this basic two transistors you find what is the value of z in that you are getting and you would get this definitely you would get this try and solve this okay two transistors in series and uh, solve this for z in okay because whatever you will get for zn it is the same parallel circuit for p moses above right so yes. same will be for p and since these two are like so v out ke respect mein agar dekhoge to it will be like zn zn parallel to zp kyun kyunki this yes. will also go to ground and mm-hmm. this is already grounded so yes. do grounds ke beech mein when there is a terminal so parallel. they will appear as parallel right so waisa aa jayega so try and solve this huh? try yes, and solve this and make sure that the zn that you get matches with this okay you know and once when you do that uh, it uh, subconsciously stays in your mind like and also try to solve these type of circuits when your uh, like uh, drain and gate are shorted so what type of resistance you see from different terminals so when you know these things no then it makes it easier for you to solve so every time you cannot go for a small signal model like ek do teen transistor hai so it is fine but if let's say there is a like ye particular circuit dekho it has like uh, four transistors then might be uh, like four above four below so eight transistors there can be 10 transistors 12 transistors in cascode type of form तो उसमें कैसा पैटर्न होता है देर इज अटन पैटर्न विच इट फॉलोज एंड उस हिसाब से यू चेंज योर सेट इन एंड सेट आउट एंड यू गेट योर रिजल्ट सो फॉर दैट यू स्टार्ट विद वेरी स्मॉल स्मॉल सेगमेंट्स ऑफ ईच प्रॉब्लम यू कीप द वैल्यूज इन माइंड फिर उसको पैरल या सीरीज में करके यू फाइंड दॉल्ट
so remaining uh, next problems which were from uh, like uh, which were related to current mirror circuits i'll take these problems in next week okay okay if we don't have any doubts maybe we can break over here and meet next week again have a very uh, wonderful evening and uh, happy raksha bandhan too so it's raksha bandhan right tomorrow day after so happy raksha bandhan too let's meet next week again ma'am congratulations for conquering the moon uh so yeah thank you but i was not part of it but yeah being an indian i mean we we as an indian we are proud of it yeah yeah very proud of it like it's a wonderful achievement like uh congratulations to all of us thanks thanks for your time ma'am and i got guidance you know thank you and yeah please uh, kindly let me know like if you follow those uh, so razavi i know it's a good, good book but there were other two books also right two or three so if you follow those books can uh, can you give me the review like how are those books and, uh, like how did you feel so maybe uh, i can also go through them if they are good so yeah so that's all for today then thank you everyone if anyone has any doubt we can stay back or we can end the session over here and meet next week any further doubts no doubts right okay bye everyone bye. see you next week yeah. bye thanks bye. thanks bye bye good night